They called them, yesterday they called on the Turkish government to stop supporting terrorism. The Greek defense minister said the bulk of Islamic State oil and terrorist financing flows through Turkey. How does this square with your previous statements that the Turkish government is not involved in these areas, terrorist, terrorist financing activities or the oil trade? Um, sure. Thanks for the question, Michael. Um, you know, we've addressed this um, on multiple occasions. And I would also point, I don't have the, the document in front of me, but we actually did a background briefing with a senior State Department official who really walked through why this wasn't a valid uh, allegation or accusation to say that Turkey was actually smuggling uh, ISIL or Dash oil. Uh, it didn't make, first of all, economic sense at all. But secondly, there was just no evidence to, uh, uh, to those allegations that there was some kind of high-level uh, Turkish uh, uh, government involvement in some oil smuggling that just – we just uh, – have not seen any inclination to that, any kind of sign of that. So we – Well, they have it wrong. So, so we, we disagree with that assessment. Okay. Even if there's no hard evidence, are you concerned about neglect facilitating this process? Do they need to crack down on extremists more? And, well, you know. I mean, I think – look, first of all, as we all know, you know, smuggling along that area or in that area uh, is, uh, frankly, centuries old. Uh, there's established smuggling routes. Uh, and those are persistent, uh, and they're difficult to squelch altogether. Um, I just – and we, the United States, reject the premise that the Turkish government is somehow in league with ISIL to smuggle oil. Uh, we just see no evidence to, to support that accusation. Um, but is it more they're sorry. looking the other way, though? Not necessarily I, I in the – Look, I can't say that there's no uh, type of smuggling going, taking place along the border. There may well be, um, uh, but it doesn't make economic sense. It's not how uh, ISIL moves its commodity. And frankly, we've seen uh, th that uh, ISIL has uh, – the more prevalent practice is for ISIL to sell its oil at the wellhead, uh, the point of production, in Syria and in Iraq, frankly. Uh, and the oil is sold directly to smugglers and middlemen and truckers. Um, you know, rather than, you know, to visit Israel as a representative of the new coalition. Papa Constantino sat down with Jerusalem Post reporter Sharon Nudison on Monday to discuss possible new cooperations between Greece and Israel. How would you define Greece's progress in terms of renewables? I myself have been only to Crete, but while I was there I saw a lot of windmills in the mountains and solar panels on roofs. Well, you know that our energy mix is a little bit like Israel, um, dependent primarily on traditional energy sources, uh, mostly coal and increasingly gas. But for the last years there's been a very determined move to change the mix and move to renewable energy. Uh, wind has been the, the main driver for this until now, though solar is increasingly being uh, a, a very powerful uh, agent in change. Is Greece considering importing Israeli natural gas? There is at the moment a big discussions on how to bring to Europe gas from a number of areas outside Europe and diversify sources. Uh, the negotiations, for example, on bringing gas from the Caspian Sea are now going to come to a conclusion. We are trying to make Greece the hub for gas uh, transit to uh, northern European countries, either via Italy or through the Balkans. And uh, in that context, the discussions with Israel are ongoing on uh, the possibility to bring in also uh, Israeli gas. And these have been discussed at a high level in the past between the two prime ministers uh, and uh, at the senior government level. Papa Constantino also served as the Greek finance minister until summer of this year, and he talked about some of the causes of the economic issues facing Greece. In terms of finance, is there a future for Greece on the euro, for sure? Um, without any doubt, and I say this uh, for uh, two reasons. The first is that on the Greek side, uh, there is a clear understanding 
among certainly the government but also increasingly in society that the future of Greece is within the Eurozone and also the necessary policies that need to exist in order for us to be within the Eurozone, meaning fiscal consolidation, structural reforms, bigger competitiveness, etc. And on the side of the Eurozone, there is a clear understanding that the problems are systemic, they're not just the problems of one country, and if you cut off that country, you save the rest. We're all in this together and solutions have to be found uh, for the Eurozone to be able to survive with all its current members. The new Greek Prime Minister as of November 11th, Lucas Papadimos, last week told Netanyahu that they're interested in strengthening relations with Israel. What do you think he meant by this exactly? I, I have learned in politics to never interpret uh, <laughs> what the Prime Minister says. However, uh, for the last uh, few years, uh, starting with um, the previous government, George Papandreou's government, uh, there's been clearly a new page opened in the relationship between the two countries uh, and uh, I think um, there have been many instances uh, there's been the visit uh, of course uh, that has happened to Greece and uh, a clear desire on both sides to uh, move closer on a number of issues uh, political economic uh, etc so uh, Prime Minister Papademos is simply uh, pushing that further uh, and he spoke with uh, Prime Minister Netany Netanyahu a few days to reaffirm our willingness to keep a cooperation uh, that is mutually beneficial. Thank you Minister Papa Constantino for um, anti-Semitic incident across the United States and I wonder what do you say to those among the Jewish community in the States and in Israel and maybe around the world who believe and feel that your administration is playing with xenophobia and maybe racist tones. And Mr. Prime Minister, um, do you agree to what the President just said about the need for Israel to restrain and to, or to stop settlement activity in the West Bank? And a quick follow-up on my friend's questions. Simple question, do you back off from your vision to the end of the conflict of two-state solution as you lay out in Bar Ilan speech, or you still support it? Thank you. Well, I just want to say that we are you know, very honored by the victory that we had, 306 Electoral College votes. Uh, we were not supposed to crack 220. You know that, right? There was no way to 221, but then they said there's no way to 270. I, I, and there's tremendous enthusiasm out there. I will say that um, we are going to have peace in this country. We are going to stop crime in this country. We are going to do everything within our power to stop long simmering racism and every other thing that's going on because a lot of bad things have been taking place over a long period of time i think one of the reasons i won the election is we have a very very divided nation very divided and hopefully i'll be able to do something about that and i you know it was something that was very important to me uh, as far as uh, people Jewish people, so many friends, a daughter who happens to be here right now, a son-in-law, and three beautiful grandchildren. Uh, I think that you're going to see a lot different United States of America over the next three, four, or eight years. Uh, I think a lot of good things are happening, and you're going to see a lot of love. You're going to see a lot of love. Okay? Thank you. I believe that the uh, issue of the settlements is not the core of the conflict, uh, nor does it really drive the conflict. I think it's an issue. It has to be resolved in the context of peace negotiations. Uh, and I think we'd also, we also are going to speak about it, President Trump and I, so we can arrive uh, at an understanding so we don't keep on bumping into each other all the time on this issue, and we're going to discuss this. Uh, on the uh, question you said, you just came back. Uh, with your question to the problem that I said. It's the label. What does Abu Mazen mean by two states, okay? What, what does he mean? A state that doesn't recognize the, the Jewish state, a state that uh, basically is open for uh, uh, attack against Israel. You know, what are we talking about? Are we talking about Costa Rica or are we talking about another Iran? 
So obviously it means different things. I told you what are the conditions that I believe are necessary for an agreement. It's the recognition of the Jewish state, and it's Israel's, Israel's security control of the entire area. Otherwise, we're just fantasizing. Otherwise, we'll get another failed state, another terrorist uh, uh, dic Islamist dictatorship that will not work for peace, but work to uh, destroy us, but also destroy any hope, any hope for uh, a peaceful future for our people. So I've been very clear about those conditions, and they haven't changed. I haven't changed. If you read what I said eight years ago, it's exactly that. And I repeated that again and again and again. If you want to deal with labels, deal with labels. I'll deal with substance. And finally, one, if I can respond to something that I know from personal experience. I've known President Trump for many years. And to allude to him uh, or to his people, his team, some of whom I've known for many years too, can I reveal, Jared, how long we've known you? <laughs> well, he, he was never small. He was always big. <laughs> he was always tall. But I've, I've known the president, and I've known his family and his team for a long time. And there is no greater supporter of the Jewish people and the Jewish state than President Donald Trump. I think we should put that to rest. Thank you very much. Very nice. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Mr. Prime Minister, thanks, thanks very much for, for welcoming me here today. And, and as you mentioned, this is my first overseas trip. I've been in my job for two weeks. Uh, this is the first country that I'm visiting on my first trip. Uh, it reflects the important relationship that the United States has uh, with Israel. But frankly, for me, more importantly, I think one of the foundational elements of that relationship is our military-to-military -military relationship. And of course, that relationship over years has been built on personal relationship, trust, and, uh, and an ability to communicate. And, uh, and so it was very important to me today to come over here to see your leadership team uh, to discuss those challenges that you addressed because I'm confident that the solution to those challenges is our cooperation. And, uh, and that's what I'm committed to. And that's, that's why I'm here today. So thank well, you. Well, it's reflected in this kind of joint exercise that we're having to, uh, this time with, uh, between Israeli forces and American forces. And, uh, and I think that's the axis of uh, good uh, stability, security, and ultimately peace. So, thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.